Listen up, people. Open your mouths and sing the story. Those of you who are far from home, immigrants, exiled, victims of oppression, those of you gathered here who need help, compassion, some of you have come through the water, some through the flood, yet I beg you, come over a way that with tears has been watered. people open your mouths and sing the story sing the songs that your ancestors taught you do not hide the love of my law sing of my power and my might tell them of my strength sing to them the story of how I rescued you from slavery tell them how I was your bridge over troubled water you must be storytellers and story listeners too. So let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Christ. So let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable. begin our time of prayer, I invite you to breathe deeply. Breathe in the love of God and exhale all tension and worry. In these times, in all times, come together as one. Be in control, Lord. Be in control. Be in control. We are still learning to trust in you, Jesus. We are still learning to trust in you, God. Be in control. Be in control. Be in control of your world. You are my people. I am your God. You are my people, I am your God. You are my people, close to my heart. Come, my people, be glad. Sing praises. You are my people, close to my heart. With glad hearts, join together in singing praise with all creation. So let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O Christ. You are our strong deliverer. You are our strength and shield. You are our great Jehovah. Without a doubt, our help comes from you, O Christ. That's the good news. In these past years, we have heard many say that their voices do not count. God teaches us how to refrain from passive spirits. Remind us that your kingdom has not yet come and our work on this earth continues. You are called to work and pray without ceasing.
to work for justice and peace. There is yet much work to do. So move forward, trusting the work of the Holy Spirit within you. Continue to sing of peace. Continue to fight for the right. Continue to speak truth to power. Continue to stand on the side of the poor and the oppressed. Continue to build your world, our world, this creation into a place of spiritual splendor, courage, and unity. Ashe. Ashe. Gracious God, as your scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, send your Holy Spirit to open our hearts and minds that we may know your deep flowing mystery and gentle life-giving grace. Help us to hear your summons, to follow and to serve in your name. Amen. the 
song is over. And when the song is over. Yeah. And we will. In your heart. In your heart. Just, just keep, keep on, on singing. singing. And the song will and never the end. Song will never and just in case somebody asks you. Somebody asks you. Was that a, a show? Was it just a show? Lift your hands and just be a witness. Lift your hands and yeah. be a witness. And tell the whole world. No. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm happy. That's the reason why I sing. I sing because I'm free. Hallelujah, God's eyes. My time is on the sparrow. That's the reason. That's the reason why I sing. Can you sing glory, glory? Glory, glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's the reason why I sing. And when we Cross that river. We cross that river to study war, to no, study more. war no more. We will sing, we will sing our songs, our songs to, Jesus, to Jesus, the one whom we adore. church can say amen all over the building. Yes. We are reading from the book of Psalm 137, 1 to 4. By the river of Babylon, there we sat down and there we wept when we remembered Zion on the willows there we hang up our arms. For the, there our cup, captors ask us for songs, and our tormentors ask for myth and saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How could we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? This is the word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Love 
Jesus. Let the church say amen. 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 Say amen again. Amen. One time for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to say thank you to Bishop for this gracious invitation to come and hang out with this august body. It's good to be with you, Michigan Annual Conference. 
good to be anywhere. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. The psalmist says, we sat down, we wept, and we hung up our harps on the willow trees because something inside of us had died. So life now is nothing like what they had been accustomed to. There was, there was nothing that they could recall but the songs. The songs that they once sang. And interestingly enough, the captors started asking for their songs. Come on, sing us one of your Zion songs. Well, church, the first few verses of this Psalm 137 expresses the grief and the, the captives and their new strange situation is explained and exclaimed. This Psalm is a communal lament about being in exile after the Babylonian captivity. Now, Israel has been captured and They've been drug away from their homes by the Babylonians. And they're now sitting beside one of the Babylonian waterways to rest. And as they paused, they cannot help but weep. Well, why are they weeping, Reverend? I'm glad you asked because they're remembering home. They're remembering the Jordan. They're remembering Jerusalem, they are remembering Zion, the city of God. I wonder how many of you in this room today have taken time lately to remember how God has brought you through this last year. Can you remember how the road was rough and the going was tough and the hills were hard to climb? Do you remember how we had to find our way through this new way of being. You remember how it took us a while to adjust to this strange new way. Now, now some folks would tell you that this place called Zion is a mere metaphor, an idealized utopia. But listen, Zion is another name for Jerusalem which is yet another name for the city of peace, which is yet another name for the city of God. Can you imagine that the Israelites knew what it was like to live in the very presence of God? They had been right with each other. They had been right with God. They had been right with themselves, and God had been right with them. So naturally, as they are remembering, it goes to reason that they would shed tears as they remember home, a place that was sacred, a place that was exclusively devoted to God. And so they remembered their past lives of freedom and happiness, and, and now, and now that life was about to be replaced with a life of bondage and oppression. They found themselves in Babylon, Babylon. And may I tell you that the only people who are happy in Babylon are the Babylonians. In fact, the very name Babylon means bewilderment. The very name Babylon is always leading into barrenness. Babylon leads to brokenness. And did you know that Babylon can take the dance out of your feet, the clap out of your hand, the joy from your heart? And if you're not careful, Babylon will silence your song. All the while, the Israelites thought to themselves, are they mocking our faith? How can they want us to sing? What, what, what can we sing? 
in this strange place? How, how, how can we sing when we can't even breathe? But at the same time, the oppressors had come to discover how this strange new song that they were hearing had become a balm even for their souls. They had actually begun to enjoy the songs of the slaves. So here they are, the people of God from the city of God in Babylon. But their hearts were still in Zion, separated from their creator God. Surrounded by their foes, saddened by their failure and shackled by their fears, by the rivers of Babylon, they sat down, they remembered, and they wept. You know, Babylon is known for rivers. There are at least four major arteries running right through the kingdom of Babylon. And these arteries function uh, as a means of transportation, and they function as systems for commerce, and they even function for leisure purposes, but they are really vital for slave trade. And when you, when you lay the stories of the Jews and the slaves side by side, you, you begin to recognize how rivers establish a soul connection between these two contexts, between the Jews and the slaves. Listen carefully to their stories. Listen to both histories. Can you hear it? Over and over and over again, we find these tribal communities wandering and, and worshiping and wondering and whispering and roaming and rambling and running, always close by the river. And they often found their way to the river and they would rest. Go lay down my burdens down by the riverside to study war no more. They purposefully assembled with a, a common heritage. It was often at the river where they met, but they first met there as strangers the Jews with their various tribal siblings, slaves in the belly of a, a slave ship. But once they found themselves on American soil, they were no longer strangers to each other. When the slaves were stripped from their own land, stripped of their own language, intrinsic rituals are gone. They're broken apart from their tribal origin, blood families stripped of their dignity forced into the slave ships and violently brought into this land, they were too forced to sing and dance strange songs, peculiar choreography, because their songs and their dances and their gods had been lost in the waters of the Middle Passage. So they were forced to hang their harps on the willows, much like the Israelites, their captors, demanded of them a song, but not, not just any song. Sing us one of your songs. There was just something about the song of the slave. And if you look again in this pericope at verses 4 and 6, you'll see that the Israelites are being called to remember, too, who they are, whose they are, and from whence they have come. And they're admonished, don't forget Zion lest we forget the God who rescued us out of oppression in Egypt once before. And, and who would surely forget when they were rescued from the waters? Whose, whose songs must they remember? Whose story must they remember? They must remember their story because you see in the story is the song and in the song is their story. So in spite of their shackled hands and feet, they still reclaimed their voices when they remembered. Even through the tears and the pain, they moaned and they groaned. They wept and sighed. They cried out to God. You see, church, this strange new way of singing was called forth from the belly of the slave. We know it today as 
the Negro spiritual. It was the first music genre born on American soil. And so through the synthesis of metaphors, of melodies, of harmonies, in one voice, through songs of remembrance and songs of joy and anguish and defeat and victory through songs of the not yet. The African slave lifted up a, a certain sound. What was that sound? It was an extravagant sound that exceeded time and space. In the, in the words of Frederick Douglass, it was a sound offered through a dissenting voice critiquing an unjust system. It was social commentary. Mm -hmm. They were cryptic codes and religious choruses. And, and if you listen closely, when that sound goes forth, clearly and passionately, when it is spiritually perceived by the gathered community, God comes. And I write about it. Then and only then can God's people recognize themselves as a vital part, a vital participant in the work of our triune God. All at once, these peoples had joined the work of God, working in a unified force, joined together hand in hand, heart to heart, in tandem out of the richness of the ethos of heaven. And if you would just allow me a minute, Kanitha, to uh, use my sanctified imagination, I believe that they picked up their instruments. And they began to teach each other their specific song. I think I hear a group over here singing something like, over my head. I hear music in the air, hey God, there must be, there's got to be a God somewhere. And I hear a group right over in that corner, yes, Tawapano, yes, Tower upon oh yes, tower upon oh, tower upon oh, must new Jesus. We are here, Jesus. We are here, Jesus. We are here. We are here for you. You see, in order to deal with their changed circumstances, the Israelites, this Levitical ministry of music and worship, called the community together to retell the story, to recall the journey, how they made it. They were testifying about the goodness of God and how God had kept them safe, how God had protected them from hurt, harm, and danger, from the wrath of oppressive systems, more often than not, it was by the means of song that the Israelites preserved their legacy. Yeah. And listen, friends, if you have lived here in America at least 50 years, you have had to have heard Woody Guthrie's text, This land is your land. This land is my land. From California to the New York Islands. Have you heard it? From the redwood forest to the Gulf Stream waters, this land was made for you and me. I don't know about you, but for me, this land has become a strange place. We've literally watched the dumbing down of America's moral meanings and spiritual ethos. God's good creation, this good land made from the good hands, the divine hands of a good God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Miriam, 
the God of Deborah. This has become a strange land, a land of social distancing, a land of isolation, a land of shelter in place. Quarantine has leapt upon us with no notice. And while many of us really did understand the threat of the coronavirus, few of us had really envisioned how radically we would have been changed from day to day and our day-to-day -day habits been changed in response to it. This new and strange land demands so much from us. This land calls us to refrain from greeting each other with a, a holy hug, with affection. This, this land now calls for us to be locked out, locked out from visiting the sick, locked out from those who are shut in. This land has become an impediment to our, our normal jobs. This land has become an impediment to our schools and our families and our worship. And some of us are angry. We're angry that we've been and we continue to be confined. We're angry that our lives have been disrupted no savings. Our favorite restaurant is closed. We don't know if it's going to open. Our museums are not accessible, perhaps never to reopen. They've closed. We, now, we really can't just blame the virus, can we? But somehow, these days that we feel the need to express our anger, somehow we clearly understand the need to blame somebody or something, but here's the problem, saints. Hear me good. We've forgotten how to cry out to God. We've forgotten how to sing. Are y'all gonna talk to me today? Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Lord have mercy. And you know, as I move across these United States, as I move across the United Methodist Church, as I have observed the ways in which the pandemic has, has ravaged the work of worship throughout the world, as I have observed how we have allowed the spirits of complacency and lethargy to move into our spirits, irrespective of denomination, education, or generation, it has been painful to watch how God's people have hung their harps on the willows. Yeah, we, we've just become silent. No clapping, no dancing. Do we even remember what worship life once was? And, and I think we're getting ready to reclaim our spaces. When we get back into those rooms, are we going to remember what to do? Yeah, we all, we all, we all have our issues, am I right? We all find ourselves in strange places with unusual circumstances. And if you have not yet, in the words of my grandmama, just keep living. But I know that there are days when you just don't feel like blessing the Lord. Just like David, there are times when you just have to encourage yourself, mind you. You have to say to your soul, come on, soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. But I, I may, may I tell you that this is just the time when we need to reach down in our souls, take down our harps. Maybe this is the time that we really need to reach down and reclaim our song. Maybe, you know what, just maybe this 137th song was never meant to inspire us. Maybe. I don't know, just, just maybe its intent is to remind us that even in a pandemic, Mark, even in hopelessness, even in the valley of the shadow of death, in failure and fear, walking down Black Lives Matter Boulevard, maybe, just maybe, I don't know, maybe we just need to pause a moment 
and head back down to the river and find out not yet praise. I, I came all the way from Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, not the city of God, but folks know how to sing there. Oh yeah, they do. And I came to you, Michigan. I came because I figured this was a place that knew how to sing. I knew that this place has a rich music legacy. You have a rich history of song. Can you remember when y'all used to sing for real? I wonder if y'all can stand up again, hold up your heads, open up your mouths, and sing like you used to sing. Michigan Annual Conference, I hope that you will begin to sing again. I need you to sing so that the sick are healed. I hope you'll sing until dead churches come back alive. I hope y'all are gonna sing until prodigal children, sons and daughters come back home. I hope you'll sing until wars cease. I hope you'll sing until the power of the Holy Ghost, I can say that here, right? Comes down. And when you do, just trust and know that somebody's going to ask the penetrating question. How are y'all singing when things are so crazy? How are you able to sing with joy when you open the doors of the church again? Folk are going to ask you, y'all sound awfully happy. They're going to ask you how it is that you're able to encourage your souls. Well, Michigan Annual Conference, I just stopped by to tell you, you cannot let trouble interrupt your praise. Ask me why. I'm glad you asked because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Why? Because you can do all things through Christ. Why? Because it is Christ who gives you strength. No weapon formed against you can prosper. And in all things, Michigan Conference, God is working together for your good. Why? Because you love God and God has called you according to God's purpose. So when they ask you, why are you so happy? Just say, I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There have been times I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave me blessed consolation that my trials come just to make me strong. When they ask you, tell them, I've been a lot of places. Tell them, I've seen a lot of faces. There have been times that I felt so all alone. Yeah, but in those lonely hours, those many precious lonely hours, Jesus made me know I was his own. So if you know it, would you sing it with me? Through it all. Uh-huh. Through it all. We have learned to trust in Jesus and we're still learning to trust in God through it all, hallelujah, through it all, mm, I've learned to depend upon God's word. Come on, put your hands together. Say it with me, church, say yeah. I've learned to trust in Jesus 
And I've learned to trust in God. I've learned to trust in God. Say through it all. Through hard trials and tribulations. Through it all. Oh, I've learned. I've learned to depend upon God's word. Yes, I have. I've learned to depend. I've learned to depend upon God's word. Can you say that one more time? Yes, I have. I've learned to depend upon God's word. And as you continue to stand on your feet, this is the blessing that we want to offer as you prepare to go back into those places and spaces, as you prepare to sing again, as you prepare to worship without doubt, without fear, as you remember those things that bless the heart of God, we just want to offer a simple blessing. It's priestly benediction as you go. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn face toward you and give you peace. Mm -hmm. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon our prayer for you, Michigan Annual Conference. We pray the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord I wonder if you can say that along with us. Whoever's sitting next to you in, in the room with you, would you experience this blessing with them? The Lord bless you. Yes, and keep you. And keep you. The Lord make God's make face, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious, be gracious unto you. you. The Lord turn face toward you and give you peace and it's a simple amen and the word simply means it is so so all over the room if you will just pronounce this amen a definitive it is so all over the room continue to stand reach out toward your neighbor and say
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all of people of God said, <laughs>